the message we're trying to get across is, is common sense is not that common. Kind of like you saw that first video, right? The guy's pulling up. You guys go to a lot of situations and there's already tension in it, right? Cattle, the horses are not in their normal environment. There's tension. So kind of like law enforcement, when you go to a domestic situation, you don't go there to escalate the tension. You go there to bring it down, right? So that's what we're trying to tell you by trying to give you some horse sense, some cow sense, some recognize the tension that's there and what to do to bring the tension down and then try to change the situation as quietly as possible. So uh, like the lady standing in front of the horse, should that lady have been standing in front of that animal? I mean, were you, what were your eyes telling you was the tension level in that animal? Where were the ears? Where was the head? What was the body language? I mean, reading body language is kind of what law enforcement does, right? What you guys do when you're looking at whatever kind of animal. You're reading the body language and you're trying to figure out a way to diffuse the situation, the tension, bring it down. So just learn to you know, use, use your senses to tell you what's going on and, and learn to recognize those signals that are being sent. Sometimes we miss those body language single, signals. But, uh, horses, horses, cattle, the same pretty much. Horses tend to be, horses it just kind of happens all of a sudden, like Chris was saying. Cattle, it's kind of, sometimes it could say, this is, there's getting ready to be a wreck, and about two seconds later, there's a wreck, because you can see with that, the cattle aren't quite as fast, but you can tell they're headed when they're, when they're running or whatever they're doing. They're going to they're gonna do something bad that's about to happen. Cattle, again, startle. You know, they, they're trying to get away from you, so learn to recognize that and learn how to handle that and to stay back. We're going to hear in a little bit, we're going to talk about the flight zone, which is kind of your personal space for an animal, the zone around them where they feel comfortable. As long as you stay out of that flight zone, they're not going to move. But when you get into their flight zone, and um, they're going to move. So learning to recognize those situations and how to use that flight zone to move the animals like you want them in a, in a, in a safe condition. Try not to make things worse when you get to a situation. I mean, if you're going to like, you know, the emergency type of situation where there's been a fire or a flood or, or a tractor, um, a semi-trailer accident or something with a whole load of cattle, or, or um, even if it's just a, you know, a situation where some cattle are out on the road, don't make it worse. But learn, know what you're doing. Get help. Sometimes the cattle standing down in the bar ditch is the best situation for the next 30 minutes until you get someone there to help you. Don't try to fix it right away if, if you don't really understand or have the, have the ability to control those cattle because they're going to be running across the road or whatever and, and make things worse. We don't want to get someone hurt because they were fine down the ditch, but then now they're running across the interstate and, you know, bad things are going to happen then. So use your, your experience to diffuse the situation and not make it worse. Again, they got the, 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 the vision that's very binocular. They're a prey animal. They, they designed that way to handle them, know their flight zone, um, use that herd instinct, use those things we know about them to your advantage to, to keep them together, to let them flow in a certain way. Um, we're going to talk about some other parts of that, like um, their vision is that know, know what they're looking at, like Chris was trying to make, same thing with horses. They're, they're looking, if they're looking at you, that's what they're focused on. So if they're not looking at you, they can't react to you. So make sure that they're that's why you make a little noise just so they, they'll turn and look at you and then you can use that flight zone to control them, use that port of balance to push them the way you want, but make sure you got enough help. Make sure you have a, you know, if they're, if they're in a safe place, leave them there till you have a plan and enough help to get them in, that, in another, a better place where they're supposed to be or whatever. If it's flood situation, whether it's just on the side of the road situation, try not to make the situation worse. Just like Chris was saying, they, they, see, they, see, they see boogeymen everywhere that we don't even know what they're looking at. They won't react to it. They're looking at shadows. They don't have quite the kind of vision that we think about. Understand how, what they look, why. You know, the dairy cows, their flight zone was eight feet or whatever. I mean, some of the situations you might get into, the, the flight zone's going to be 100 yards. And so it's very difficult to handle that animal when they won't even let you get within 100 yards of them. So you're going to have to know what you're doing, have help. Have, you know, have equipment if that's what it's going to take. Have the resources to be able to handle those animals because they're the, a big flight zone, I think, is a point that they're kind of missing here. And that was made for, for people handling dairy cows, but um, we're using it here. And, and you're, in this situation, that 
with a lot of, you know, a, a roadside situation, a, a, a wildfire situation, a flood situation, those animals, their tension level is already going to be up. And then so you're going to have to figure out how to handle them and understand those different herding instincts, how they look at things, what you're going to be able to do with them. And then sometimes we just make it too hard. I mean, there's times that you can leave, you can just have a, if cattle used to being fed in a feed sack and you, you can, one person can lead a hundred cattle just shaking a feed sack because they think they're going to be fed and you can just lead them right down the road through a gate or whatever. So those are the easy situations. And that's usually the common situation like with law enforcement putting a lone cow out. She just got through the fence because she wanted the grass in the ditch that hadn't been grazed. If you get after her, she'll just go right back through the fence versus knowing those cattle that are in that high tension situation where there's been some kind of emergency situation. It's brought their tension level really high. So it's really gonna increase their flight zone. So you have to be aware of that and uh, be able to figure out a plan for that, develop a plan, which is easier said than done sometimes. Enter the flight zone, stay out of the flight zone, port and balance, just you're driving the cattle, right? If you want them to move that way, you're walking up behind them into their, into their flight zone. If you want them to slow down, you're backing out of it. That's basically, I mean, that's all there is to it. But learning to, to look at their body language, how fast they're moving, what they're doing, their comfort level, what it, you know, and control them that way. And then recognizing the kind of cattle, Chris mentioned those cattle with a little ear. Lots of us call them the, the brain across cattle. If they've got big ears, if they got that big sheath, if they got the loose skin up in the front of the brisket, they're probably a brain across cow and their, their, their anxiety level goes up really quick. And they're gonna be the kind of animal that ran over the, over the highway worker there in the beginning. So recognize what you're working with. If they're beef cows, they're usually gonna be a little calmer. If they're younger animals, the, tension, you know, the flight zone's gonna be higher. They're not used to being worked with. So just recognize the age of the animal, how, well, how familiar they are with the situation they're in, and uh, handle them accordingly. Use your common sense. Use your cow sense. Use that, once you can get one animal kind of started, just stand back and they'll flow that way usually if you've got the animals that use that herd instinct to your advantage. Don't, don't overdo it. Don't do too much. Yeah, so recognize the danger to the humans if it's worth it. If, that, if it's a bull and he's in a bad, he's in a bad mood, if it's that long-eared Bramer cross that's, that's, you can tell they've got, they're high-headed and they're, they're, they're trotting around, they've got that tension to them, that, that their body language is telling them, telling you they're very, you know, their, their tension rate state is very high, they're, they're anxious, and so those are not the ones that you want to stand in front of and, and, and wave your hands. Some people don't realize what a calf, what an animal is willing to do in order to escape a situation, how much they can go over a fence. They're willing to just run full blast right into a, a brick wall practically sometimes. So try not, you know, cattle will do crazy things when they get, when you, when you get inside their, when they get that anxiety level so high. So also, you know, cattle, when, the, when, their, ang when their tension level gets so high, I mean, they're going to do crazy things like that. We've all, if you've worked very many cattle for very long, you've seen calves, like if stalker animals, you've seen them kill themselves by just running into a fence sometimes. They'll, they'll break their neck, they'll do whatever you've seen. And also think about the heat level. If it's 100 degrees, you shouldn't be pushing those cattle very much because they will just run to exhaustion and kill themselves that way as well from the, from the heat exhaustion. Cattle don't sweat, they can't. They have to pant by it to cool themselves off, so it's not that good of a process. So they um, they can kill themselves just from the heat. So and they're so be aware of those kinds of things. Don't push those animals. Wait for another time. Wait until the cooler part of the day if you can do something. Just depending on you know the situation. Sometimes you have to do something because of the danger to the public or whatever. You just can't leave those animals there. But be aware of those kinds of things that the cattle. You know, those cattle, when they get scared, when they get tension level up, they will do some crazy things. You know, their self-defense too as well. Usually, like, like Chris was saying, they're, if they, once they run over, the, like the, in the beginning video, the girl got run over by the calf, but then he just kept going. He wasn't looking. He was just trying to get out of the situation. He was trying to run, and if you're in his way, he's going to run over you. So be aware of that because they're not, they're not going to stop very often when, when they've got that when the tension level is so high. Fence lines, yeah. Cattle usually respect fence lines. 
except for unless they're very athletic. But you know, generally in a herd, you can move them down that fence and you can use that to funnel them in the direction you want to go. Like in a highway situation, just take them down the bar ditch and uh, down to the next gate or wherever you need to take them to get them to a set of pins to be able to get them in a trailer or whatever the situation demands. Use those natural barriers to move the cattle and help you. Bring the tension level down if you can. No hooping and hollering. No, yeah, no sirens going. No flashing lights unless maybe you're out on the highway and you need to warn cars coming to slow down. But um, tension level, bring it down. Don't escalate it. Don't make the situation worse. Recognize it. Think about it. Have a plan. Have the resources and, and know what you need to get, get the cattle in a safe situation. I don't know who's in whose flight zone, but something went wrong right there. Any questions about that? I mean, mainly just use common sense. Learn to recognize those, that body language, the ears, the head up, the, the muscle tension, the attitude, the speed they're moving, the familiarity with the situation that they're in, and, and bring the tension down if you can and move those cattle to, to a safer situation. These cows are very gentle cows. They're used to being handled, so their flight zone is very small, so I can get up to them and, and they're not hard to handle. I'm watching her point of balance, I'm, which is, if I want to move the point of balance, I come forward, spin her around, come back to the balance point where she's standing there. I, she's looking right at me. I can see it with her head. So if I want to bend her back the other way, I would walk into her, pass the point of balance, come back, bring her this way. That's all it is, is controlling the head, the point of balance and knowing what that flight zone is. Most cattle's flight zone would be much bigger than this, so we wouldn't be this close and it'd be more difficult. But these cows are used to being handled, so their flight zone's very small and they're easy to handle, easy to stop. So I'll bring, let her by. I'll bring, it, bring some calves back. Their flight zone should be a little bigger since they're younger, not used to being handled. as much, so the, you can see their flight zone. I'm, they're, they're starting to get a little nervous. I'm crowding them too much. I'm in their flight zone. I back off and they calm down. So if, I've got, if I need to sort them, so I'm gonna walk into this other one's flight zone to sort them off, let this one by, then back off. That's just demonstrating the flight zone. The ones that knew what was going on. So they're the ones leading the, the calves. Use that to your advantage, let those cows herd instinct, right? They're, gonna, they're following along, they're willing to do what, you, what you're told. So these cows are familiar with this place and they kind of know where they're going, but in a real world situation, you might have cattle that have never been in that situation before. They don't know where they're going, so you want to be sure and have enough help to be able to control where they're going. Not make the situation worse by pushing them into traffic or, or something like that. Understand, if this was just a common county road that was five miles off the highway, it would be a lot different situation than if it's on the interstate, right? Because like we talked before, don't make the situation worse. If you've got the cattle hemmed up someplace, leave him there because he's going to need a lot of help, right? He's going to need experienced people. He's going to need panels, pens to set up, trucks to haul them off with. You can't just gather up five or ten people and be able to handle the set of cattle like those would be because they would just do like they did in the video where you watched. They would just run right over you. If it's not happening when you get there, keep it under control. Get people around the cattle maybe and hold them up against the fence like we kind of got them here in the corner. I would say if it would be like in an interstate busy highway situation, that would because you're protecting people's lives by doing that. If it was a you know a, a rural country road situation, probably just, you know just run them down to the next gate, find the neighbors that are close. They're going to know whose cattle they are or whatever. If you know where they go, put them back there. But we try to make it too complicated. But I mean, it, it, it's accurate. Use it. Yeah.